This segment of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. WTO lead negotiator Shavad Golang today releasing the offer the Bahamas will make during an upcoming meeting with the World Trade Organization. That offer contains a breakdown of what the Bahamas proposes regarding goods and services. One, sensitive agriculture and manufacturing uh, products uh, that are produced in this country have higher proposed rates than the currently applied rates representing a number of instances of what we call tarification of the existing support programs. Two, the average rate of duty will drop from 32% or thereabouts to about 15%. So if you take all the duty, add them up and divide them by the eight plus thousand lines, you get an average rate, you should get an average rate around 15%. And that third, there are any number of instances in which existing tariff rates are maintained. Now, according to Mr. Lang, the Bahamas' offer closely mirrors its current national investment policy, again stressing that there are a number of benefits to joining the WTO, one of which is economic growth. Our own economic modeling suggests that because of the transparencies that get created in a WTO commitment by a country, because of the uh, modernizing of your business legislation and environment that there has tended to be a up to two percentage point growth in an economy of an exceeding country for up to five years and that even if the economy slows or after that five years the growth that took place in that economy doesn't shrink thereafter but what about the challenges of the agreement? Well, Mr. Lang says there's no issue Bahamians face concerning WTO accession that cannot be addressed. If you are a country where your government is dependent on custom duties for revenue, then uh, if you're lowering duties through a WTO accession process, that means that there's a certain amount of revenue the government will lose, which presumably, if it doesn't want to run a larger deficit, it has to make up. And so, how the government does that is the challenge that has to be met. Secondly, if you're lowering custom duties on imports and you have a local manufacturer who is competing with that import, then that local manufacturer will face added competitive pricing pressure, pressures. And so how do you respond to that disadvantage that might accrue to that local manufacturer? That's a challenge. Also facing similar challenges, he said, would be those in the agricultural sector who may feel additional pressures relating to duties being lowered. The final draft of the offers to be completed by the end of the month. A pretty big day in the life of the Baines and Grantstown community. Tuesday marked the 128th anniversary of the death of its founder, Alexander Bain II. Among those who gathered to lay a wreath honoring his memory and to commemorate his contributions was President of the Baines and Grantstown Advancement Association, Reverend Dr. C.B. Moss, who recounted Bain's life and times. Alexander Bain II was born in Nassau on March 6, 1812, to a Scottish loyalist of the same name and Hetty plumber, a free black woman. Alex II became prominent businessman principally through shipping. He was married to Adele Crockett, a black French woman who also lived in Bain Town. In the early 1840s, he and his brother Charles purchased a 160-acre tract of land adjacent to Grantstown, known as the Weatherspoon Estate from Susanna Weatherspoon and named it Bain Town. The property was divided into lots and sold to black people. Stay with us up next to check on sports and weather. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.